Hello everyone and welcome to a very interesting game from round 2 of the 2018 United States Championship that uh, features yet another uh, line uh, of the uh, vinegar variation of the French. And it's not like I'm choosing uh, to show only uh, vinegar French these days. Uh, the, we had uh, Ivanchuk versus Kasparov and then we had uh, Lila Chess 0 versus uh, EM Lovelace. Uh, but it seems like uh, all the best games are now played in that variation. Uh, here we have a game between uh, World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana and uh, his countryman Alexandro Lenderman. So, uh, like I said, a very exciting game and a lot of you have suggested it, so obviously I had no choice but to show it. And uh, I don't have any, any photos uh, per se, but I do have this one uh, from the stream, so here, just uh, to, get, uh, to get in the mood for the game. Uh, it's uh, of really poor quality to show it full screen, so I'm afraid this will have to do for now. Uh, so, let's see the game. Uh, Fabi has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e6, the French defense. Uh, d4, d5, knight to c3 and bishop to b4, as we've said, the winner variation of the French. Uh, we have e5, the advanced. Uh, c5, now comes a3, bishop captures, pawn captures and now queen to a5. Uh, kind of attacking that pawn on c3, but it's, uh, it would be a very rare variation where black would actually capture this pawn with the queen. Uh, in the game, Fabi continued bishop to d2, uh, but uh, if you're playing maybe against a friend somewhere or it's uh, maybe a casual game or something, you can uh, you can try to trick him with knight to f3. And, uh, you know, if he thinks maybe you blundered or something, maybe he actually grabs this. And it's not, not immediately clear how does how does white punish this uh but uh, if you know then maybe you can grab a couple of uh, sneaky points with this for example a bishop to d2 you attack the queen uh queen to b2 uh, you have to move the queen it's the only square now rook to b1 you attack the queen queen captures on a3 and now rook to b3 and now it finally becomes apparent that if you play queen to a4 uh, bishop to b5 will check the king and win the queen uh but uh the, the interesting part is, what if you play queen to a2? If queen to a2, then queen to c1, and it doesn't matter what black plays. Uh, next comes rook to a3, and the, the queen is trapped, regardless of what black plays. Uh, and again, if you move back here, then again, bishop to b5 will be check, and the game is lost for black. Uh, but, okay, either way, after queen to a5, the reason why knight to f3 is not played, because black doesn't have to capture, black can simply capture on d4. Uh, but, okay, bishop to d2 by Fabi. Uh, and now queen to a4, uh, kind of forcing the white queen to stay on d1 as the c2 pawn is now attacked and also pressuring the d4 pawn. Uh, Fabi plays queen to g4, uh, totally disregarding this c2 pawn, and uh, you might uh, you might think why not why not grab the c2 pawn? Well, the g7 pawn is attacked first. You have to take care of this. Uh, king to f8. Uh, you could play g6, yes, but this would only weaken the dark squares around your king. You already gave up your dark square bishop, so no <clears throat> no good reason to do this. Uh, so king to f8, and now comes h4. Uh, Fabi doesn't care about uh, this queen captures on c2 move. Uh, h4 is an excellent move. Uh, black is definitely having ideas of knight e7 to g6, maybe then h5 will always be an idea to kick this knight away. Uh, this also opens up... Uh, uh, a nice square for, for this rook, so a nice rook lift uh, will be in order. Rook can come to h3, then g3, or maybe f3 if needed also uh, will uh, help out with the defense of the of, of the c3 square. And uh, if black even decides to play something like queen captures on c2, uh, with ideas of maybe rook to c1, attacking the queen and bringing the queen over to, g, uh, to g6, uh, kind of snatching a pawn and then going for uh, the queen exchange, uh, you could you could go queen to h3 and then maybe black queen will be somewhat uh, under under a lot of attack here after bishop to d3 uh, and as always this rook on c1 is x-raying that bishop on c8 very nicely and another thing after rook to c1 you could exchange queens immediately with queen to e4 check but then after queen captures pawn captures and let's say uh, f3 and knight uh, captures captures Again, white would have this excellent center and he would have a very clear way of developing uh, his pieces. Bishop can come to c4, to b5, uh, and again, all of black's pieces are undeveloped on the last rank. So, uh, probably both of them as they are playing this variation obviously have uh, a lot of lines prepared. 
uh, knight to c6. He doesn't really care about the c2 pawn. Uh, obviously, if the World Chess Championship challenger offers it, uh, <clears throat> you do not want to grab it. Uh, h5 by Fabi. And uh, here again, what do you play here? Obviously, you don't want to go for the c2 pawn again. There's no point in repeating the variation just shown. The knight c6 move didn't change it. Uh, but it's interesting, what if you go knight ca uh, pawn captures on d4, as you are attacking the d4 pawn three times now. Uh, well, then h6 uh, begins an all-out attack on the black king. Uh, now you do have to react to this, obviously g captures, and now bishop to d3. And now you see you have an open line for the rook. This bishop is very strong, this bishop is very strong, the queen is very active on g4. And uh, after something like knight captures and queen to f4, uh, it's, a very, it's a very interesting position captures with check you have to capture and uh, now queen to d6 is a very serious threat after you defend this then c captures bishop to b4 uh, is coming and now the black king will feel ver very uncomfortable on f8 and black still has this problem of every piece being undeveloped so uh, lenderman isn't interested in this he plays h6 stopping all ideas uh, fabi had of pushing h6 himself uh, queen back to d1, and now c captures on d4. Very, very instructive uh, how, how Fabi uh, handles this position. Uh, there's no point in recapturing on d4. Black would simply recapture back. Uh, so knight to f3. Pawn captures on c3. Bishop captures on c3. Now the e5 pawn is guarded twice. Uh, and here g5 was played. g5, but it's very hard to find a move here for black. Uh, for example, if Ivanchuk was playing this position with black, he would he would definitely play knight to b8. Uh, knight to b8 is a move. You you could maybe find it if you if you spend like uh, like a lot of time <laughs> trying to decipher the position. Uh, it's uh, it's the engine stop recommended move knight to b8. And as Ivanchuk always says, the hardest move to find is with knight back, uh, <laughs> simply because it uh, opens up. Uh, opens up uh, this diagonal for your queen to return into the defense. Uh, so after, let's say, bishop b4 check, knight defense, and knight to d4, you can now come back with the queen, and now black will regroup, unpin uh, with king to g8, the knight is now coming back to c6 to exchange some pieces, and this is one way for black to, black to handle this position. But, you know, it's very hard to decide for a move like this, uh, uh, getting the knight back. Uh, so, after this h6, uh, queen d1 and pawn captures, as we've said, uh, g5 was played. So, h captures on g6, en passant, uh, queen to e4 check, bishop to e2 blocking, and now queen captures on g6. And here, Fabi played queen to d2. And Fabi spent, uh, Fabi spent a lot of time, I, I believe it's around 23 minutes deciding on this move, as you do have to figure out is, is this okay to give up the g2 pawn and what to do next. Uh, figure out an entire game plan and of course you don't really achieve anything by grabbing this pawn simply rook to g1 I mean, there's no reason to do this uh, So knight g to e7 simply developing and now we have bishop to d3 Fabi attacks the queen and this was the idea uh, one of the ideas of the queen to d2 move And now what do you do with the queen? Well, you could simply play it back queen to g7 uh, which would be the best square for the queen. But here, uh, after spending almost 10 minutes, uh, I believe it's 9 minutes and 10 seconds, uh, queen captures on g2 was played. Alexander Lenderman uh, doesn't find anything wrong with this, as, of course, rook to g1 is, isn't is really an idea immediately, because the knight is also under attack now, and the bishop is no longer on e2 to defend the knight. And the first time I saw... Uh, theme like this was in a game by Alexander Alechin. It was in a game where his opponent captured the b7 pawn, attacked the rook here and the knight on c6, and then Alechin played a uh, king from e8 to d7 and <laughs> defended the, the knight with his king. And uh, so did uh, Fabi play in this game. He played king to e2. Now he defended the, the knight with the king, and now this rook can also come here to, atta to, to attack the queen and also trap the queen. Uh, so the queen must move. Queen to g4 was played, and now comes rook to h4. Uh, not allowing the queen any escape uh, via maybe maybe this way. So the queen now has to go back further. Uh, que queen to g7, and now comes rook to g1. So the queen doesn't really have anywhere to go. Uh, you, have to, you have to block this with knight to g6, which was played in the game, and now comes rook to f4. So, uh, unfortunately for Alexander Lenderman, for the price of one pawn... Uh, he now has a whole lot of problems. Uh, these rooks are immensely active, the bishops are uh, 
I mean, excellent. Uh, this Whenever this knight moves, the bishop to b4 will be a deadly move. Uh, rook captures on g6 is, is an immediate threat as uh, the df7 pawn is pinned. So here, king to e7 is the best way to continue for black. You have to unpin as soon as possible. Uh, but uh, here, Alexander Lenderman was in serious time trouble as all of the moves uh, from this position forward were played in, in a couple of seconds. Uh, here, Lenderman plays uh, knight c to e7, simply defending the knight on g6. Uh, but here's the problem. He now uh, moved the knight from c6 and is no longer controlling the b4 square. And Fabi immediately punishes this. Bishop to b4. And now there is no defense against the rook captures on g6. Lenderman played a5. This was played in 5 seconds. And Fabi played rook captures on g6. And it, it was in this position that Alexander Lenderman resigned to the game. Uh, there is no move here. Black can play. The queen has nowhere to go. Uh, on, only square is queen to h7. And now you can play basically any move. You, you still win the game. But simply bishop captures with check. King captures and now rook to g1. And now the queen really is trapped uh, with not a single square available for her. If you play f5, e captures on f6, en passant with check, again you lose the queen. Uh, but it's interesting, even without this a5 move, which was played in, in time trouble, uh, even if you play something like king e8, unpinning, then again it's a very simple bishop captures, the knight is pinned, you can't capture, uh, and after king captures, now queen to b4, check. King moves, now queen d6 check, bishop to bishop blocks and now bishop to b5. Uh, there is no way, there is no any good way to stop checkmate here. You have to play f5 uh, and then simply rook captures. Again, you can't capture the rook because you lose, uh, you, it's queen captures on d7 checkmate. And after you play something like queen e7, doesn't really matter, simply captures, captures and check. King moves and you pick up uh, the, the final piece. And after all of this is said and done, you're up two pieces, and that's simply too much material uh, to even consider playing this. So, uh, after this rook captures on g6, uh, Alexander Landerman resigned the game. So yeah, uh, a brilliant victory and a brilliant miniature. This is 23 moves uh, with the white pieces against the winner were French. Uh, very nice and a very instructive game. If you face a lot of French defense, you know, you might, you might want to... Uh, check this out and and perhaps you, you even enjoyed it so yeah uh, here we can check out this uh, photo one last time here is his second move of, uh, Alexander uh, Lenderman playing it and yeah uh, it's still too early in the tournament this is only uh, the second round so I will not be showing any uh, results or pairings but uh, as as the tournament progresses I, I'm sure I, I will show uh, maybe maybe even get a couple of photos so yeah, uh, that's it. I will say that uh, for now in the lead with two points is Wesley So. Uh, I believe uh, tied with also another player. I, I didn't really check it out that thoroughly. But uh, like I said, as the tournament progresses, I will give it, give it more attention. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Oliver Perge and uh, Simo Halme for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. Uh, hopefully with another interesting video and uh, one question for all of you uh, I do see a lot of comments uh, on my videos that m the audio on my videos uh, has decreased so uh, does this have any merit to it uh, you know do share in the comments uh, thank you all and I will see you soon